Hi, George Durkee with Yosemite uh, GIS, and uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to give a quick introduction to Carry Map Viewer, which is being uh, uh, deployed for rangers and some fire in both Yosemite and uh, uh, North Cascades, and maybe some other uh, parks are going to join in. And so, in the first part, uh, we'll look at downloading the app itself, the viewer app, which is free, and uh, downloading the maps that we'll distribute, and just some of the basic tools of, uh, of Carry Map. And I'll also quickly go over uh, uh, how, we, how we create those maps, uh, give you an idea of uh, how you can contribute. Uh, if there's something you want on the map that's not there, we can uh, pretty easily put it on there if, if the data is available. We chose Carry Map uh, because we can put a lot of layers onto uh, the app, the viewer app, and turn them on and off so they're not they're either visible or, or not visible. And it's pretty fast. It has a great search function. And uh, uh, the Park Service, of course, has a uh, uh, license for ARC GIS products. And so uh, this is the builder part of the app uh, works with uh, ArcGIS and uh, it puts a tool bar on ArcGIS 10 and from that we create the map and convert it, extract it into uh, an app or a, a map that's uh, viewable on, on the viewer and uh, works works pretty good. So this is a view of the carry map map we've created for Yosemite on the Windows desktop viewer and uh, you'll notice uh, we're zoomed in pretty good here and so on the left is the table of contents so those are just some of the uh, data sets that uh, we've made available and uh, you, as you zoom in you notice you can see building numbers, road names, uh, in this case location of AEDs, uh, river location, campground site numbers, etc., etc. Um, and over here in the table of contents, uh, you can turn on or off the uh, layer itself. Uh, so if your map is too cluttered or there's something on there you don't need at the moment, uh, you can just turn it off. We've got helicopter LCs turned off at the moment, although those can obviously be useful. Aerial hazards are on there. Uh, anyway, all sorts of stuff, wilderness zone boundaries. Um, and uh, uh, one of the reasons we chose this, as I mentioned, is because of the data we can make available to rangers and other field people. So if, especially if you're a new ranger, uh, this is essentially this much of the same data set that dispatch has. So if they uh, call and dispatch you to a name you're not familiar with, uh, you can look it up in the search function, look up uh, the turnout or, or whatever uh, it's called and uh, uh, locate it pretty quickly. And there's other mapping software out there, of course. Uh, Avenza is one, and we also have a site license for the Avenza viewer, uh, which uses uh, uh, GeoPDFs. Uh, but unfortunately, they're basically a flat map and don't have a search function. So that is, all these layers would be flattened out into one map that you couldn't turn on and off. And there's a there's a use for that sort of thing. So if you're responding to a, a wildfire or something like that, or a search, uh, we put uh, uh, your area of responsibility on there, or the fire perimeter, or your search segment, um, and, and that would work fine. Uh, but for uh, the ability to carry this around while on patrol, uh, and to be able to do a search for particular uh, uh, locations, uh, then then uh, this is the way to go. So for Yosemite Rangers, uh, this is what your map will look like when uh, zoomed way out. And uh, notice how just basic it is. We've got the different districts identified, the main roads, and uh, a little bit of relief, you'll notice. Uh, you can see a little bit of uh, uh, drainage features there and ridges and so on. And uh, it's pretty straightforward, of course. It's just like downloading any app. Uh, you go to uh, whatever your Play Store or the Apple Store and search for Carry Map. 
And make sure you get the the viewer. There's also a, a carry map and preserver, and you, you don't want that. And uh, then uh, we'll also send you a link, if you haven't got it already, uh, your GIS person uh, will send you a link uh, to the map itself that's on a Google Drive. And uh, with luck, we can also send a QR code so you can just uh, uh, get an image with your camera and go straight there. Uh, Ansley and the Chief Ranger's Office in Yosemite uh, will send these out and uh, we'll work out something similar for North Cascades. Um, but everybody will, uh, it will be on a public Google Drive and uh, the link will take you right there to download. And then uh, if you haven't done this before, and uh, uh, you know, I don't want to tell you guys things you already know, but uh, uh, let's not take any chances here. Uh, you get to the Google Drive uh, and it'll tell you uh, that no preview is available and so you click on uh, download uh, or the download button in the upper right here. And uh, the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention because uh, I had a little bit of trouble with the Android is that the other way to do this is to download it onto a desktop computer or your station's uh, uh, computer on a, on a accessible drive that's accessible to everybody and uh, uh, then plug your phone or, or tablet into the, that machine and then just transfer the file directly and I actually find that a little easier and Android does a weird thing uh, which maybe most of you are aware of but um, it'll plug in but it won't show you the, the uh, files because um, it thinks it's charging off your U USB thing and so if you pull down from the very top uh, you'll see that you have a choice uh, for USB uh, for file transfer and you tap on that and then make sure you tap on uh, transfer files and that'll uh, uh, that'll show you the uh, files of both your uh, uh, your device and you can open up another Windows Explorer uh, for the files on the on the computer wherever you downloaded it and of course as I said you can also download it directly to your to your phone or device uh, and uh, ideally you want to move it to somewhere uh, on your uh, device I've got an SD card which gives me a lot more room and create a, uh, a folder on that called, for instance, carry map data. And then you can put your uh, maps and any data in that so it's always in one place. And uh, once you've done that, uh, then you start searching for, you go to the same place and find your uh, your map. And so uh, in this case, it's the, uh, uh, we change the name occasionally, but it'll be base map or front country or something like that. It's what you just downloaded. And you click on that to open uh, the map. And uh, so there you come up with, and again, this is Android. I, I think iPhone is pretty darn close. And here's the various uh, uh, tools you have immediately. So the three lines here are your table of contents. Tap that, and that'll open. Uh, start GPS tracking. And so then we'll start recording uh, intervals uh, uh, onto a GPS uh, file. And I'll go over that in the next uh, video. Uh, zoom, uh, lower left here, uh, zoom to your current GPS location. Uh, small scale bar, a uh, couple of uh, a plus and minus, obviously, to uh, zoom in and out, and the search function. And so for your table of contents, uh, you click on those three little bars and you get uh, the uh, layers that are on uh, on your device and you tap on that and you can turn the whole set of layers on and off so for instance if you have your Yosemite uh, map that you've downloaded you can also uh, either online if you have a good cell connection you can get any of a number of uh, S3 base maps to use but those will only be available if you have a cell connection and uh, I'm kind of partial to uh, uh, topo maps, 
And so I've created a topo map background for uh, for the uh, Yosemite um, uh, map that we're sending out. Um, it's kind of a big file, so you'd want a uh, extra uh, uh, SD card probably, unless you have a lot of space on your phone. But uh, send me a note if you're interested in that, and we can uh, make that available to you. Anyway, you tap on the layers, and uh, it, ex it, it shows all of the layers that are available. Uh, and, and as I said, you can turn them on and off, uh, and uh, pretty obvious when it's when it's off. And then the um, to, to, to get back to the map itself, uh, just click on the back uh, and then on the map. And you're back at your map. And now let's uh, take a look at the search function. And uh, so I've typed in uh, half dome here. And it'll search through all of the data that's available and show all of the references to half dome. And so you can scroll down depending on what you want. Um, and uh, half dome, the top of half dome where the LZ is. And then to go to it, uh, you just click click on the, uh, the little uh, symbol on the right here. And it takes you to uh, that location on the map and plants a little marker there. And it's labeled uh, half dome, which helps. And so uh, uh, a lot of new rangers may not know what those little wooden posts are uh, throughout the park uh, that are uh, interpretive signs, you know, T1, T2, all along the Tioga Road or, or wherever. Um, and you might be in a position where a visitor reports uh, an accident or something near, you know, one of those interpretive signs. Um, and you can look up where they are. Um, and it also occurs to me that uh, if you're not paying close attention on patrol or it's snowing or whatever, and you're just uh, a little zoned out wandering along and you come across an accident or something like that, um, uh, you might not know quite where you are. And so uh, you can use the search function if you're, uh, if you're near one of, uh, uh, one of those signs. And that brings up anything with T1 in the name, so T16, uh, but we're looking for T1, and so um, that'll uh, uh, go to right at the beginning of the Tioga Road at Crane Flat, where the first, uh, it's the Tuolumne Grove of Giant Sequoias. And uh, so it zooms in there, and notice uh, down here it tells you what the point is, and you can either click on that, or you can show details uh, off the three bars here. And there's a lot of stuff coming here, but go ahead and fool around uh, with it. You can't you can't mess it up, um, and if you do, we'll just send you another uh, uh, data set. So the the key on all of this, of course, is is practice. Anyway, uh, it'll show the details, and then you bring up the actual record itself, uh, which for uh, T1 isn't all that exciting, but for some of the buildings, um, it it might give you more information and. We have a, a long-term hope of attaching buildings, for instance, of the large buildings, to uh, an actual uh, 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 footprint and, and layout of the building and, and make a PDF um, that you can go to to see uh, the interior. So if you're responding to a fire or other emergency, it'll, it'll show you the layout of the building. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but it's, uh, it's on our list. And uh, you can also uh, go to coordinates. So if you're given coordinates uh, by dispatch, um, and you'll want those coordinates in uh, decimal degrees uh, or degrees, minutes, seconds, or degrees, uh, decimal minutes, um, is the only, uh, it, it won't take UTM. So if you're given, for instance, UTM, ask dispatch uh, or GIS on a SAR to convert to a type you can use. And so when you go to coordinates, uh, you get a little pop-up box here where you enter lat and long. Now, uh, at the moment, um, there's an annoying bug in it. You know, you enter lat and long correctly, um, and uh, you get an error message. Um, there's a bug. And I sent in a note a couple of weeks ago, and they said, oops, 
Um, so as of June 2018, this bug still exists. And the workaround, strangely, uh, is that um, you have to reverse. You have to put longitude where latitude goes and latitude where longitude goes. Um, so if you get that error message, um, that's the problem. And if you don't get the error message, well, I guess they fixed it. And I'm not sure if this is the case on, on an iPhone, uh, but it is at the moment on the latest version for the Android. And uh, the next little tool here is the current GPS location that's in the lower left. And so that'll immediately uh, uh, show your position with this uh, tiny little uh, red uh, triangle. And to obtain the coordinates of that point, uh, hold your finger over that point and press and hold. And then you'll get another little uh, pop-up here and tap on uh, show coordinates. And once again, uh, the bug shows. Uh, so uh, it should show as lat long, but in fact, um, it shows as longitude and latitude. So don't let that confuse you if that's uh, what it shows up. And it'll show up in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And so remember uh, when, uh, so if you're out on patrol and you're reporting to someone your location, uh, remember to clearly identify uh, the coordinate type you're transmitting in. And uh, so you would say uh, that you're at, uh, uh, that you're using degrees, minutes, seconds, and you're at 120 degrees, uh, minus 120 degrees, uh, 13 minutes and 37 seconds, and uh, latitude of 38 degrees, uh, 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Um, and it's really important to enunciate each uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, so there's no confusion, and that you tell dispatch or SAR that uh, you're using degrees, minutes, seconds. Uh, we get all sorts of mistakes when, when that's done, done properly, so I'm throwing that in for you. Um, and you can also add a push pin uh, and all sorts of other things here. Um, but I'm going to cover that in the next uh, video. And so that's, uh, that's it for this video. In the next one, uh, which is not yet done as of um, June uh, 13th, uh, I'll do uh, track logs, waypoints, and uh, building and using uh, field data forms on the, uh, uh, on the viewer. And it's actually pretty easy to do. It's a pretty handy little program. So if you have questions, uh, send an email to Ansley. And I'm not giving last names or anything because I'll make this uh, public. Um, but my email address is also there. And uh, I'll be working into through October uh, and uh, uh, can help help you guys uh, with anything you need. Um, and if if you're using it, uh, be thinking about how we can improve it. This is uh, the second year we're using it in Yosemite, and it'll be the first year for North Cascades. And so pay attention to things like zoom level, uh, where labels or symbols appear. So, um, you know, so if, if you're looking for something and you're zooming in uh, and it's not appearing, keep going and it, it, it will but maybe we have the zoom level set in too close and, and we can move it out. Um, and maybe there's data there you're aware of the park has or that you want to add. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, try and do what works for folks. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm a fan of uh, base maps, uh, topo base maps, uh, where we can use those as a background. And uh, there's problems getting them to you over the park network uh, for large file sizes. Um, but there's workarounds. And if, if you uh, feel you'd be happier with uh, a base map and your, your device has the room, uh, again, uh, give Ansley or I a call and uh, we'll, we'll help you demo uh, uh, what you can do with that. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot uh, and uh, see you in the next video.